All right, hexing the Stroop. Honestly, it's pretty simple once you get the hang of it, but it might be a little bit confusing at first if you're not sure what you're doing. Um, so hopefully this will be illuminating for you. <laughs> first thing you want to do is you want to go and we need to get some information from the M64s that we're going to be molding together. Um, here, first I'll just show off what I'm going to be using as an example. I just made this quick little task of entering Rainbow Ride. And what we're going to hex onto this is the Cruiser Cross in the Rainbow Task World Record. So, first thing we need to do is gather some information. Um, we need to we need to know what frame we're going to be combining these two tasks on. So, let's open up our Rainbow Ride entrance task. <clears throat> and I want to note something real quick. If the task that you're hexing on to your M64 has like the A, B, or start buttons being spammed, then you can actually save yourself a little bit of time by just looking for this logo right here. And then you can find this logo. Um, you want to see what frame it appears. So in this case, it, frame, it appears at frame 262. And then you want to find what frame it appears in the task that you're hexing on. And then you can just match up that frame. Um, that'll make it a lot simpler for you to hex, but unfortunately, the cruiser cross in the rainbow, that input file only presses A once on the star select screen, so it doesn't it doesn't do it automatically. We don't get an automatic optimal star select essentially. So we need more information, or there's some more information that can be helpful to us. Um, after these stars appear, it is 11 frames later that you're able to actually press the um, the star select button before you're actually able to do so. So 11 frames would be 288. So we're going to go ahead and mark that down as the frame that we want to be looking for. And then and we can stop that movie and we're going to go and see what frame this task actually selects the star. So there's frame one. All right, it does it on frame two. So now we know all the information that we need from these two tasks. Just mark that down as well. So I'll play back. And now we're ready to use Stroop. So you want to head over to the M64 tab. It should already be here when you first open up Stroop, like for the first time. But if it's not for some reason, then you just go ahead to this little plus button right here. And then in this list, there are a bunch of extra tabs they're able to add. So first place we want to go is to the open button right here. We're going to want to open up the task that we're hexing on. In this case, Cruiser Cross in the Rainbow. And as you can see right there, it is on frame one that this um, says it presses A. But didn't it just say that it was on frame two? This difference is because Stroop in the hex editor counts up from zero, while Moopin counts up from one in terms of um, input files. So anything you see in Moopin, you actually are going to want to do it one frame sooner in the hex editor. This will come back um, later. I'll explain that in a bit. But for now, what we want to do is we want to go and copy um, all the want to go all the way to the right here. Get all the inputs of the first frame that we want to include in the task, and then we want to scroll to wherever we want to hex down to. Um, in this case, for the sake of simplicity, we'll just do the last frame. So we want to copy every input from frame 1 to frame 572. Then we just press the Copy Row Range button. And right there, we have all the inputs copied, and we're done with this task. Then we just go to the Open button again. Then we go to the task that we're hexing onto. And for the sake of, you know, speed, I guess, we're just going to go ahead and check what frame we had, and we're going to use this handy little go to feature. So 288, go to, oops. And if you remember what I said before, we actually want to do things one frame before we think we have to, because this said frame 288 in Moopin, but Stroop essentially sees the game in one frame, one frame sooner than Moopin does. So we actually want to copy it onto frame 287. So 
what we can do is actually just take every frame below it and delete it for the sake of just making this a cleaner, more concise task. If you were hexing something into a full game run or between two stars, you'd obviously not want to delete everything after. But that's just um, this is just for the sake of simplicity. So then we can just press the delete or arrange button and then make sure that we have the correct frame selected and just press paste insert. So now it is, um, it is tentatively hexed on, but we need to save it still. Now there are a couple options that we can use to save. We can either press, press the normal save button, which will replace the file that we were originally hexing onto, or we can press save as. Now save as, we can make a brand new file so that we don't have to lose our original file. I'm just going to call this one hexed, and it is now hexed. Now the inputs are combined, but there's one thing left to do in this specific case. So because our original file starts from a save state, this file, this M64 can't can't play without a save state of its own. So I'm just going to control C, control V, copy paste. I'm just going to go ahead and rename this to the same thing as our M64. And now we will be able to play it. So let's go over here. Open up hexed. And there's our optimal star select. And there we go. There's all of our tasks. Pretty simple. There are some uh, other cases where it might not be as simple, like when you're dealing with things other than the star select screen. But an important thing to remember, I think, is to just have uh, an anchoring point that you want to um, have both tasks meet on. That's just having that in the back of your mind whenever you're working on something and you're hexing it can be really helpful for, you know, not making too many mistakes or having op um, unoptimal movement, having to start a frame later by accident or something, or completely messing things up and having it start a frame or more sooner, which will cause a desync. So that's about it. That's the simplest explanation of the fact that I can think of, and I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.